Louis and no one. Louis. Okay, there's three. Yeah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Very warm welcome to all who have gathered here in this sacred place as we celebrate the Eucharist together. I am leading a group of pilgrims from Ireland, from the Archdiocese of Cashel and Emily. And with me is Monsignor James Ryan, who next year will celebrate 70 years of priesthood. <clears throat> Father Joe Egan, who this year celebrates 50 years of priesthood, so his golden jubilee. And the parish priests of a very important parish in our diocese where the Church of the Holy Cross is it's uh, the church of Father Celsus Tierney, parish priest is with us. I'm also very happy to welcome with me on the altar today and with you, the pilgrims from California and different parts of the United States. First of all, Father Brian Kelly, who is here with pilgrims. <clears throat> who is here with pilgrims from San Diego and from San Bernardino. <clears throat> I welcome Father Noel San Vicente from the Diocese of San Jose, California. <clears throat> and Father Engel from the Diocese of San Jose. So we are also welcoming perhaps individual pilgrims who are here, who have gathered around the altar, and those of you who have come from different parts of the world. You are very welcome. We celebrate as a body, as one, with the Word of God and with the Eucharist. And it's in that spirit of unity that we gather together around this altar. And before we enter into sharing, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And my brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to hear the word and to share the Eucharist, in a moment of silence, we pause and ask God's pardon and forgiveness for our sins and our failings. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray today, as we offer our prayer, for the many special requests that we carry in our hearts before our God. People who knew we were coming to Fatima asked us to pray for them. So let us just in one silent moment commend those people to the Lord and Mary, our mother. I have been asked to pray for a special intention today and to pray also for a Philip O'Neill who died in December 2020. His mother is on a pilgrimage here with us. He never made it to Fatima, but he had a great devotion to Our Lady of Fatima, as indeed I'm sure many of you will know people who are devoted to Our Lady of Fatima. 
So we include them all in our prayers around this altar today. And the Mass I offer is the Mass of the 7th of October, which is the Mass of Our Lady of the Rosary. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, made through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to listen to the readings. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the, to the Ephesians. From Paul, anointed by God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, to the saints who are faithful to Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Before the world was made, he chose us, chose us in Christ to be holy and spotless and to live through love in his presence, determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ for his own kind purposes to make us praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved, in whom, through his blood, we gain our freedom, the forgiveness of our sins. Such is the richness of the grace which he has showered on us in all wisdom and insight. He has let us know the mystery of his purpose the hidden plan he so kindly made in Christ from the beginning, to act upon when the times had run their course to the end, that he would bring everything together under Christ as head, everything in the heavens and everything on earth. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 97, and the response the Lord has shown us his salvation. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has shown us his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. The Lord has shown us his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. The Lord has shown us his salvation. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the sound of music, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, Acclaim the King, the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your precepts, O Lord, are all of them sure. They stand firm forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus said, Alas for you who build the tombs of the prophets, the men your ancestors killed. In this way, you both witness what your ancestors did and approve it. They did the killing, and you do the building. And this is why the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles. Some they will slaughter and persecute, so that this generation will have to answer for every prophet's blood that has been shed since the foundation of the world. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was murdered between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will answer for all of this. Alas for you, lawyers, who have taken away the key to knowledge. You have not gone in yourselves and have prevented others going in who wanted to. When he left the house, the scribes and the Pharisees began a furious attack on him and tried to force answers from him on insurmountable questions, setting traps to catch him out in something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. So in these brief few words, I would like once again to welcome all those of you who are joining as a family of pilgrims around this altar today, here in this sacred place. For many of you, this is the destiny of your pilgrimage. You may have visited other parts of Portugal or other parts of Europe, but this is the special place where you have come and where all of us together gather in the name and around Mary, our mother. And I would just like to read for you one short passage that Pope St. John Paul II spoke about when he was <coughs> talking about Mary and the Rosary. And it is very important, I think, for us on this day to rededicate ourselves to what that Rosary is all about. St. John Paul II said, It could be said that each mystery of the rosary, carefully meditated, sheds light on the mystery of the human person. The psalm tells us, entrust your cares to the Lord and he will support you. To pray the rosary is to hand over our burdens to the merciful hearts of Christ and his mother. The rosary does indeed mark the rhythm of human life bringing it into harmony with the rhythm of God's own life in the joyful communion of the Holy Trinity, our life's destiny and deepest longing. Through the rosary, the faithful receive abundant grace as though from the very hands of the mother of the Redeemer. These are the words of Saint Pope John Paul II. And I would like to illustrate them with two examples of the rosary. <clears throat> Many of you will be aware of how important the rosary is in your own family and in the history of your own church, wherever you come from. But we come from Ireland, and it has always been a very significant part of our faith life. Some of you will be aware that our church in Ireland went through many different stages. It flourished, it fell into danger, it was persecuted, flourished again. But all of the time, it was the rosary that was one of the strongest prayers that our people passed from one generation to the next. Very often the poorest couldn't go into church, but they could pray the rosary. And when our people went to different parts of the world, they went in a very special way with the one prayer that they could carry with them, the rosary beads. And a friend of mine who was working in Western Australia, in Perth, and perhaps there are people here from Western Australia, when the Irish went there in the beginning of the 20th century and the late 19th century, they had no priests with them. 
But what they would do is they would gather on a hill outside Perth. They would turn towards Ireland and they would recite the rosary. And so in that prayer, they bonded themselves to their own people and to the faith that they had received. Now we know in time priests came, but what kept the faith alive was the heart and love that they had experienced back in their own country and the knowledge that their own people were reciting the rosary. The second example I give you is this. Four years ago, nearly all this group were on a pilgrimage to Poland. We went to Czestochowa, we went to see the birthplace of Pope John Paul II, and you know, we went to see the place where Saint Faustina came from. And at that particular time, a priest that I know, I am a member of a missionary institute, Society of African Missions, was kidnapped in Niger, in a country north of Nigeria. And I asked the pilgrims who were with me that time to remember him in their prayers. And his name was very easy to remember, in fact, because his name was Pier Luigi, but Italians had reduced it down to Gigi. So it was easy to pray for Gigi. <clears throat> so we left that pilgrimage, and over the following months and even years, people would ask me, is there any news of Gigi? Well, it was two and a half years before Gigi was released. And he told a very interesting story. He was kidnapped by Islamic extremists outside his own mission in Niger, just south of the Sahara Desert. And then he was traded into Burkina Faso and over into Mali. And while he was in Mali, he was held captive. They refused, he asked one request, could he have a Bible? He was refused that because he was told the only book he could have would be the Quran if he embraced Islam. <clears throat> so Father Gigi was there in chains, kept on outside, he never got inside the house, and every day would cook his meals, just do the minimum. He began to think, in fact, that we had all forgotten him. But one interesting thing he did when they wouldn't give him a Bible, he made out of a piece of cloth that he had a rosary beads and was able each day to pray his rosary with the battered cloth that he had. And that was the thing that kept him going through all those difficult years. So the rosary is a very powerful reality in people's lives right up to the present. And when we think of the secrets of Fatima and we think of what they meant and what they're all about, perhaps the greatest reality is, the hardest secret was, that the church continues to suffer, just like Father Gigi, who returned back to Italy, and I thank God he is there living in the north of Italy, but I remember it was the rosary who kept him going. We are still asked in our own time to remember those who are not as blessed to be able to gather in a place like Fatima in freedom and in God's grace. To remember those who are this day suffering persecution because of their faith and their belief in the risen Lord. So I simply ask you as faithful ones who have gathered to pray in the rosary for those who are at this very moment captive and in difficulty because of their belief in Jesus Christ. And that we ask at this celebration, Mary our mother, to be with them at this time. And perhaps this evening when we have the procession, you will pray some of that rosary for those who are not as blessed as we are and who are persecuted. Because the rosary, like it carried the emigrants from Ireland over a hundred years ago through difficult times, how it carried Father Gigi just four years ago through difficult times, perhaps is the one prayer that so many people have now and that we can join with them 
to make it a prayer and a plea for mercy and peace in our world. So these were the words I wanted to share with you today. The rosary is not something distant and far away. It binds the people of faith together. It is like the psalm that we sang or that we prayed in today's readings. And the psalm <clears throat> today said, <clears throat> the psalm said today, Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. Let each one of us sing a new song. Sing again the rosary as our song, deep within our faith, witnessing to the presence of Christ and the Lord in our world with the ever-protective cloak and banner of Mary, our mother, over us. Let that be our prayer this day, especially for the church that is suffering, but for all those who carry pain and suffering in their hearts, that they will too be able to sing a new hymn, a new hymn that we have in the Rosary. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> and now I'd like to invite those who are going to pray the prayers of the faithful, if they would kindly come forward, please. <clears throat> And as we turn to our Lord this day, we turn now with our prayers because we pray our prayers with confidence and in trust in the blessings that we have received through the resurrection of our son, his Mary's son, Jesus. For Catholics who are involved in many community organizations of service to others, that they will see such voluntary works as an expression of their faith and be carried out with kindness and respect for others. Lord, hear us. For the gift of love, following the example of Mary, may we live as the adopted children of God so that we may make his presence known in our world. Lord, hear us. For the gift of freedom, so that with our sins forgiven, we may live in the grace and peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. Mary, in her apparitions and in the gospel, wants to draw all of us to her son, Jesus. May we, too, draw near to Jesus by following Mary in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all who have asked for our prayers, especially on our visit to Fatima, for those who have a right to our prayers, and for all who have no one to pray for them, that God will hold them close to his heart. Lord, hear us. For all who have died, may they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. In a moment of silence, we offer our own special prayers to the Father, through Jesus and Mary. Lord, hear us. We join all our prayers, especially the prayers of our hearts, with the prayer of Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we turn to you with confidence and with trust as we place these our prayers before you, as we do so with confidence in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to the wonderful power of Mary, our Mother. We make them always in your name. Amen.
Vesture you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, which earth has given in human hands and made it come for us the bread of life. And must you be spoken and may we come to share in the divinity of Christ to humble himself to share in our humility. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, we shall live in the day. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may be rightly conformed to these offerings we bring, and so honor the mysteries of your only begotten Son, as to be made worthy of his promises, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed to see who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with St. Jacinta and St. Francisco Morto, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, the local bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, at this passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and in a special way today, we remember family members who have died, those who have died recently, and those whose anniversaries occur. And to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen invite you to just silently pray in your own hearts for peace, especially peace in our hearts and peace in our world at this troubled time. And perhaps just with a simple gesture, we extend our peace to our neighbours and to our friends. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, 
Free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
I will hold your people in my heart. together. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. We pray, O Lord our God, that just as we proclaim in this sacrament the death and resurrection of your son, so being made partakers in his suffering, we may also merit a share in his consolation and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so just before the final blessing, it's just again to thank all the different people who have joined us from the different dioceses on the west coast of America, but from many other parts of the world who were here this afternoon. Thank the priests who have celebrated with us. And I ask Our Lady to watch over and to bless each one of you during this your pilgrimage visit to Fatima. And so we go from here singing a new song to the Lord. We sing again and learn again the joy and the praise of the rosary. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. We go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Immaculate Mother, to you do we plead to us, God our Father, for help in our need. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. We pray for our country, the land of our birth. We pray for all nations that peace be honored. Amen. 